Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So if you've been following the channel for several years now, you've probably heard of me talking about the BV350. Actually one recent video I did about six months ago, I think it was in August uh, 2020, I reviewed the, the, the latest BV350, the, the material gray one that's at the current 2021 model year scooter. And it's got nearly 100,000 views. So obviously it was a pretty popular video that wasn't about Vespas. And several times I've talked about how much I love this scooter and it's one of the most perfect commuters. Well, I'll just get right to the point. I'm parting with it and I'm gonna do the last service on my bike. I've already done a spark plug, clean the air filter, some other basic stuff, but this isn't really a video on how to do the service. I've covered how to service these bikes in the past but pretty much me just rambling about this bike and my thoughts on it, uh, the, the positive moments about the, having this BV350 and my prior 2013 BV350, um, and what I'm gonna move on to. So stay tuned in this video. I'll tell you what I'm gonna buy next and what my plans are. So I hope you enjoy. Um, probably if you're not interested in seeing me work on it, you can certainly listen to this podcast style because I'm just gonna start rambling. Let me get right to it. So my old BV, it's not that all that old. It's a 2017 model. I got this thing about a year and a half ago. Um, I covered it in a video, I think back in, I even wrote a little note, uh, November 2019, I did a video about the scooter and what I did to it to, to prep it up and the history on the scooter and it pretty much replaced my 2013 BV350 that had uh, quite a few miles. It's a new owner of the BV350, my old original 2013. Uh, the gal still has it. I know she loves it. She doesn't ride it all that much because I think I've sold her a battery in the last like year and a half or something, but I know she still has it from as far as I know. Um, had this scooter. Um, this was pretty much my workhorse for either commuting to work or I'd cross the border with it almost every other week because I was pretty much into going to the watch soccer matches down in Mexico. And maybe I'll find some photos, post them up later in this video of the scooter down there. But this was like my little, you know, mule for pretty much crossing the border. It just always had Mexican insurance on it. Um, it was very easy to lane split through all the difficult traffic situations. It you know, handled great on the freeway, could handle freeway speeds uh, great. And then everybody knows what happened uh, March last year, 2020. Well, things kind of changed. I just kind of quit using this scooter. So I kind of was toying with the idea. Well, I've had two BV350s now, and I've had several GTSs, ET4s, um, you know, the Sprint, the current Sprint I have. Uh, of course, my vintage Vespas I'll keep forever. Uh, but I thought maybe I'll toy with getting like something else. So, and I'll tell you one thing, in between getting this and now selling the scooter, I did buy a new adventure bike. Um, got a Triumph Tiger 800 2019 model and it's a pretty nice bike of course i'm not using as much as i would like to um but you know hopefully i get some good trips on that but i don't know i, I generally enjoy the slower pace on the scooters still you know even on this this thing's perfectly capable of tour, touring just as well as the um the triumph tiger probably even i'd be comfortable doing off-road you know, long distance off-road on this as well. I don't know how well it'll hold up if you did 100 miles of gravel roads, but it's certainly a BV350 is capable of it. Um, scooter has like 75 or 7,700 miles on it. And my experience with the BV350, if you ride them hard, kind of like I like to ride them hard, you gotta definitely maintain them a little bit more because the belt, in my experience, if you ride them on the highway, the, the belt will not last 12,000 miles or whatever that is, 25,000, 20,000 kilometers like Piaggio's um, states it will. So um, the, the new owner, 
I want to make sure this thing's good for him. So I'm just going to invest in a belt for him. So he won't have to think about it for a while. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, let me tell you about the, the owner that's uh, getting it. His name is Doug. He's a local San Diego uh, fellow that has, he has a, a older Yamaha Riva 125. He got it for about 700 bucks. And we've been trying to keep that thing alive. And it's like one thing after another. And the last couple of times I'm like, the motor just has like an internal, like not a knock noise, but it's not sounding so good. And some of the parts are real difficult. It's got a major oil leak. We can't get all the gaskets and seals from Yamaha to, to repair it. Got to keep in mind the Yamaha Revo uh, 125 was sold in the United States from like 1984 to the early 2000s. So some of the, you know, now that it's pretty much 20 years old, there's many parts you can't even get for it anymore. So it, Doug came in I don't know, a couple weeks ago, kind of just new. He wants another newer scooter. Took our advice. I had to show him a couple things we've had come through the shop. And I'll tell you, we just haven't had that much used inventory. But he really had his eye on this gold GTS uh, 300 2013 model that we had in here. Um, and well, guess what? That first one came and sold within like a couple days or a week or something. And then we, ironically, we got a second uh, GTS 300 in gold. So the second one came and went as well in a very short period of time. Actually, I featured that one in those, uh, the used GTSs that we had um, a video a couple weeks ago, or a week, I think about a week ago. And I said, well, we don't have too much used inventory at this point. And I'm pulling a rookie move right here. There's one more bolt left here. There we go. Now we'll get the cover off. Um, but I've been toying with the idea of selling this for a while. And I brought it to the shop a couple days ago and said, well, let me do the service. This is a little past due for a 6K service. And um, I said, I'll figure out, sell it. And haven't even really put it out on the lineup of used bikes yet. So he came in, talked to TC, our sales manager, on what we have used. I think he got a stimulus check. So he was pretty much excited to get something uh, to replace that Riva 125. And pretty much I just had this scooter right outside. They have a hang tag, you know, for the, that we're selling it. And um, he, was pretty excited to get this bike. He just says, well, it's a robot's bike. I definitely want it. So, um, so we talked about the price, the 4,500 bucks for 2017. That's kind of perfectly maintained, be all perfectly serviced, good tires. I think it's a fair price. Um, all registered, all that other stuff. Um, and I said, well, let me do the last little bit. And I want to make sure it's extra good, like put a fresh belt in it. So I'm going to do that. And he'll pick it up in the next couple days. Um, so putting the belt in, I'm going to drop the oil, put oil, change the oil. Did a spark plug, already cleaned the air filter. Uh, brakes are perfect. I put centered front brakes on the front. I've replaced those just because I wanted different brake pads on it. Um, but it's pretty much all dialed in. I'm sorry if anybody else wanted to get a used BB350. Uh, that's in really good shape. Uh, pretty much this one's sold, but they're out there. There's plenty of them out there. There's people always mixing up their game with uh, what scooter they're gonna, um, or maybe this just doesn't suit their needs. My first BB350, it was a customer who bought it, and I think they only put a few hundred miles on it, and they need to sell it in a real hurry. So they came back to the shop, and that's how I got that first BB350 that I had. And I think I got it in 2014 or 2015. So right when it was a fairly new model and it replaced, a, uh, I had a GTS 300, a 2011 GTS 300 in silver that went on uh, the first Mexico trip. And I had a problem with the fuel pump with that thing actually. Um, so I pretty much sold that silver GTS. I built the yellow GTS the, that I used in the Mexico rides. And that bike's still in uh, Mexico right now in Puebla. 
So I kind of missed that bike, but that's pretty much how I got that first BV 350. So yeah, what, I don't know what I'll miss about this scooter. It's definitely a very versatile scooter, you know, and um, especially in a commuting situation, if you got to go through some heavy traffic at highway speeds or something, this is definitely the tool to do that. Um, but I don't know, I like with my more modern stuff, I, I don't mind uh, parting with them, replacing them. Probably the robot scooter I'm not gonna sell because that's so highly customized. Uh, my vintage stuff, I never really part with them. I can tell you one thing I am gonna part with soon. I need to um, pull out my mothball status is my old 73 Yamaha RD350. It's an all original RD350. Um, it's fun to ride every once in a while, but it just doesn't serve much practical purpose to me. So I think the ne next one on the chopping block to be sold is my RD350. So I'll probably prep that one. Ironically, that, that scooter came from uh, Phil from the Cleveland Vespa shop. You know, he was in uh, San Diego several years ago and brought some scooters to, or motorcycles to sell, vintage motorcycles, and I bought two of them off of them. Um, the RD350, I fixed a bunch of little problems. It had a problem with the, the shifter as a detent spring I had to replace. There's, I put new crank seals in it, new gaskets, I think put a new clutch in it, fixed some small electrical issues, put a headlight in it. Um, just a lot of little tinkered things. You know, I didn't really restore it any means. It's still a nice, clean, original uh, stock. RD350, which is kind of a hard, hard scooter to find these days, or motorcycle, excuse me, I can't even get uh, my two wheelers right. Um, and I've ridden it probably, I don't know, 2,500 miles, 2,000 miles, put new tires on, new chain, all that stuff, and just ride around. It's definitely not very fun on the freeway, even though it's got plenty of power uh, for the age, but it is, I don't know, just, not the, the funnest thing to take on long trips. You know, it's kind of fatigues you quite a bit being a two stroke engine, but you know, it's got all that charm of the two stroke noises. And that's, I probably almost like riding it more just to listen to the, the beautiful two stroke uh, sounds that it makes, you know, even though it's got the stock pipes and not some obnoxiously loud expansion chambers on it, still the twin cylinder two strokes, there's something about them, so. And I'm, you know, I don't know, I won't really miss it had my fun with it, enjoyed it, had probably more fun fixing it up and working on it than actually riding it. So I'll get that going, probably sell that this spring. Um, and then I'm gonna buy something new. So another new, new scooter to add to my collection. Uh, keep everything else I have. Hopefully use that Triumph a little bit more. So what have I done with this scooter? Um, the original BV350, it's gone all the way up to Reno. It's, it's done a couple long trips and going pretty far down in Baja Norte in Mexico, you know, past Ensenada and some fun trips and going out the desert, Yuma, that kind of stuff. This one, I think it's gone as far as Yuma and I think one time I took it up to LA. That's about it, uh, uh, several times and just right just south of the border or just commuting between home and uh, work. And I really just wasn't putting the miles on it even, even before the pandemic. I just kind of slowed down on the miles other than going crossing the border on it. So, so what did I not like about this bike? Uh, I've always, I think I've even said it in my review, the suspension's kind of um, lackluster, but it's what you expect for a vehicle of this price point. You're not buying a $18,000 motorcycle that comes with fully adjustable, nice suspension on it. Um, this is something that's about a third of that. So kind of makes sense. I think it's perfectly adequate for what it is, but they definitely are nice when you put the um, bitubo rear suspension on it. And you can even do a little bit on the front, change the oil weight, um, even change the preload of the front shocks. Uh, make for a little bit better ride. There's another thing that just really bugs me on this scooter. And I even replaced like one or two of these uh, under warranty while um, 
you know, while a customer had it, this, this scooter is not under warranty, but if, see that, that caliper there? This has got like seven, 8,000 miles, 7,500 miles. It rattles around. And usually I don't pick on products that much. It's just annoying because you can hear it, especially if you put a large windshield. It's not unsafe. The pins are still fine. It's just, I think they have excessive clearance on uh, the guides. So that's a, a sliding caliper. So essentially the way a sliding caliper works is as the pistons that press, that press the pads only on one side, and then the caliper can slide side to side. And it's much like most car uh, cal brake calipers found on cars, disc brake calipers. And it has a pair of uh, metal pins that have like a rubber lined uh, bushing that they slide on. And the rubber, you know, just doesn't have much rubber. When they're brand new, they're a little tighter, but right away, I'm talking even after 2000 miles, you always notice that. And I sure hope they improve that on the BB400 put a better quality caliper on there. I've never gone as far as thinking I need to put a different caliper and I've never seen one, even some real high mileage BVs, you know, the ones that were 50,000 miles. They were about as loose as this one. They pretty much get to the point where they're that loose and they just stay that way. And it kind of just bugs me. So, you know, I don't pick on too many of the Piaggio products just because I have so much love for them, but you know, they're not all peaches and cream. Um, Another thing I'll pick on is my original BV350 at 2013. And I've even said it in the review uh, when I reviewed, the, I think the 2020 or 2021 uh, BV350. The nice thing is 2015 and later, they, they improved a lot of items on this scooter. Um, like you can even see they got a little thing that routes the hose. Those 2013s were just prone to coolant leaks. I've seen them leak at the uh, base gasket but my 2013 has some extra problems, electrical problems that, that kind of turned me off. I had to replace the coil, uh, the cap failed at one point. Um, not only that, I had uh, to, to replace two ECUs on it. It had a point, uh, a point where it would just die out and you'd have to let the scooter cool all the way down. There's something that would get heat soaked inside the ECU, which is on top of the engine. Um, so, it, you know, it's kind of exposed to a lot of vibration. And most of those MIU, as I call it, Magnum Morelli MIU ECUs, for the most part, they're, they're fairly reliable. Um, but that 2013, I had some problems with it. And it was uh, quite an expensive part to have to replace. Um, Motor-wise, no problems. You know, it did, did nearly shred a belt in about 10,000 miles. You know, I caught it before it broke the belt, but I know some problems with the transmission. Um, you know, they say the belt lasts 12,000 miles, but I ride it hard, go on the highway all the time. And, um, you know, that was a little bit of a problem. So I do amend that the 2015 and later BB350s, they did improve a lot of stuff. This scooter really hasn't had any problems whatsoever, um, other than just little nuisance things like that vibration from that brake caliper in a short period of time. Um, And you know, this is being a newer one, 2015 later, it's got the ASR system that works great on these. Um, the ABS is very nice safety feature to have on a scooter as well. You know, the miles, the miles and range, it's pretty good. I, I did have a, uh, early on, I had a pretty good surprise with this scooter. Um, I, uh, I was doing this, this, this time trial thing <laughs> with my first BB350. And I did some careful calculations. In the owner's manual, it says the, the tank pretty much holds three gallons. Well, guess what? I had it all the way filled to the brim and rode it. Light came on, kept on riding and riding it, kind of calculated my mileage, knew what my miles per gallon, riding it at pretty high speed you know, on the highway. And sure enough, it ran out of gas. I'm like, oh. Fortunately, it was like, I don't know, it was like a half mile or a quarter mile to a gas station exit. So I pushed it to the exit and I filled the thing right up to the brim of the filler all the way up. It only held 2.5 gallons. So they either got the, the wrong information, but, or they're not including the volume of the fuel tank or maybe the European uh, scooter, which does have a different fuel tank compared to the US scooter. So. Maybe the European one truly does hold um, 
15 liters or three, you know, about three gallons. So I don't know what the, the real story, I never really looked into it more, but um, you know, with about two and a half gallons of fuel, if you're riding it pretty fast, it's still pretty decent range, you know. You should be able to go 150 miles with this scooter, you know, on a tank. Uh, definitely always goes over 100 miles, no problem. But I've always thought it could go, you know, for something that's capable of highway speeds, it could have held a little bit more gas, even if it was just a half gallon more, like they advertise in the, um, the owner's manual. So, so now the $10,000 question, what is Robot gonna get to replace the scooter? Um, well, I'm gonna wait until I get rid of that RD350 as well. I'm gonna sell that soon, fix that one up because my garage is already too packed with stuff I'm not using. Um, but I think I'm gonna get a brand new GTS 300 HPE, likely in the, the Racing 60 form with the green and yellow. And I think I'll have a little bit of fun with it. You could certainly have a lot more fun with the accessories uh, on the GTS versus the BB350, which I've always, even in all my videos, I say this is more of a tool than something like a Vespa where you have more of a passion into customizing it and making it what you want. Um, so that's, that's what I'm getting next. And like I said, I'll hold back for a little bit, get that uh, RD350 Yamaha sold soon. I certainly know the new owner's gonna get a lot of use out of this, probably a lot more use than I have. I'm sure he'll keep this for a long time. Uh, he certainly wanted to keep that uh, Yamaha Riva going for much longer, but when parts get scarce, uh, that could sometimes be the end of a road for a vehicle, you know. And I have a lot of people, they want to fix up old stuff, and all it takes is one part sometimes to, to bring a vehicle to a point where it's not easily repaired or very, very difficult, you know. You know, it could be something as simple as a gasket. I and mean, sometimes you could make a gasket, but you're kind of going into unknown territory. When you're doing this professionally, you got to make sure you do repairs that are proper and not like a jerry rig or a half ass repair, you know, on something. So that's, it's a difficult dilemma, even for a service center like us that handles older and vintage of vehicles. You know, there's a lot of service centers throughout the United States and I don't know, throughout the world, they probably say, guess what? Your vehicle is 10, 15 years old. Uh, we don't want to go through the effort of attempting to repair it. Um, and a lot of people think, how dare uh, a dealer or shop do that? But I, I can side on um, the side of a dealer a lot of times. It's just, you could be going down a bad rabbit hole trying to save something that's not working that's older. All right, so that's it for my old BV. Uh, I'm always happy to hand them off to a new owner. I've always been that way with all my vehicles when I sell them. And I sell my stuff for different reasons over all the years. I've had trends where I was into vintage Hondas or I've had several dirt bikes at certain times. I've had more vintage Vespas. Um, it's always fun to get in something new and I never have any regrets of getting rid of anything because I know there's something else in the future that I could fix up for myself or if I have the financial means to buy something newer, that's always exciting as well. Uh, you know, and I feel like there's a two-wheeler for everybody. And the kind of the saying is we all scoot sooner or later, you know. Maybe you're not gonna be scooting on a two-wheeler, but maybe in your old age, you might be taking a mobility scooter or something. So kind of a, a funny little saying, you know. You might start with a push scooter, move on to a motorized scooter, move on to a street legal, uh, motorized scooter onto something that goes on the highway, maybe go into motorcycles, and then eventually you'll be back on the scooter. It might be a mobility scooter. So if you're interested in a BV350, I have plenty of videos on how to service it. Pretty much do every service you need to do on the scooter is taking all the body work off, doing the valve adjustment. Just go on the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel. Just type Vespa Motorsport in YouTube and you search in our channel and there's like over 600 videos and there's a handful of videos specifically on the BV350 doing services, some upgrades I've done over the years on them. Um, the ones that have been very popular, the reviews specifically of the 2020 
uh, BV350, and then the 2021 BV350, uh, for some reason that one got like 100,000 views. It uh, did really good. I published that one back in August 2020. Um, the video I did of this scooter when I first got it was back in, I think, November, or maybe it was October, November 2020. So you can see video of, uh, if you just search for robots, commuter, Piaggio, BV350, that's when I got this scooter, about a, just about a year and a half ago, or a little over that. Um, so, hasta luego, see you next time. I'm sure I'll see it again, being a local customer. Uh, that's. Uh, purchased in this scooter and I'm excited to start doing some new videos uh, once I get a new ride because I'll certainly customize it to a next level. Not quite as much as my uh, robot sprint. That's more like the Sunday cruiser, but I want to not make it so flashy that it's like gets attention on the street. So I'm kind of a modest person. I don't like things that get too much attention. It's just the kind of the way it is. Uh, also, thanks to uh, Scooter Bob in Phoenix. He gave me this cool hat. Black Flag, if you uh, know your old 80s punk music, uh, but their scooter leg shields, pretty cool hat. Um, thanks for watching. Thought I'd do a video of me just chit chatting about my own personal stuff and vehicles, and when I say bye to one of them, and the last service I do on a vehicle before it's no longer mine. And some tips for you if you're buying something used and you don't know what you're doing. I would highly recommend having, hopefully there's a shop or somebody that can support you, get a pre-purchase inspection from somebody independent. Um, you may be very experienced. Even if I was buying like an expensive Jeep or something, I don't know everything about it. I might follow stuff on YouTube, on the forums and think I know a lot about them, but there's professionals that work on a certain vehicle, whether it's like a Jeep, a Toyota, a Harley Davidson, a Vespa, you know, um, it's always good to pay a small amount of money to get a second opinion when you buy something used and have somebody look it over because they're likely to find some stuff. I mean, you're spending a lot of money. Even somebody spending 4,500 bucks, that's a lot of money. You want to make sure there's a peace of mind. And I personally feel like responsible that this scooter is like going to be reliable for the new owner up. You know, there's no factory warranty, but if something happened to it, I'll let them know for the next 90 days, I'd cover it um, as long as it's doesn't hit a curb and blow out the oil pan and run out of oil, which I've seen stuff like that. You know, people have done crazy things of blowing up a motor over going down a curb and losing all the oil or something. But, you know, I, I really don't think anything's gonna go, go on with this thing. It's been perfectly reliable the whole time I've had it. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Consider subscribing if you haven't. I assume most of you have gotten through this whole video because you do subscribe to my channel. I've, I'm um, honored to uh, talk about my scooters and my scootering life sometimes. Um, until next time, check out the next video.